Hi, today we're going to talk about the three phi codes. We know what a phi code is, I'll explain that, but we need to understand why there's three phi codes, so that's the title, three phi codes, and this is going to lead to an understanding of how we derivate a visual interpretation of this magic number 666. So I'm, I'm calling it harmonic 666, but first of all, we, are, we have to understand what a phi code is. So you can see here, I'm going to show you about eight or 10 slides on my keynote presentation. We can see that there's three spirals here. So these spirals are the generation of the golden spiral. So when you look over here, you can see that when you start with one, one, two, three, five, eight, we call that the Fibonacci sequence, and that makes the, tra the traditional golden spiral. But did you know there's actually two other spirals that are completely unique, um, and they constitute what we call the three phi codes. So this phi code starts off with one, one, and you add up the digits and you get to two. This one starts off with one, three, and four. And this other code here starts off with one and four, you add the digits is five, and it keeps forming an infinite cycle. So these three spirals of sixes, this is like 666, they all have the sum of 108. So these are phi codes because they add up to the magic number 108. So I wanna show you a little bit on the number theory of these. So I wrote a book on the three phi codes, and you can, those three, those sets of 24 digits, there's one spiral here. There's, so there's, this spiral here starts off with one, one, two, three, five, eight. That's a Fibonacci spiral. We'll call it phi code one. Phi code two here starts with one, three, four, and it forms that spiral. And there's a third spiral here that starts with one, four, five, etc. So that was the front cover of three distinct phi codes. And that was done early in 2000. So we've got the three spirals, harmonic 666. And this is where I'm gonna give you an example of what is a phi code. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with two numbers. If you chose any two numbers in the universe, like three and seven, 106 and 110, any two numbers, we're gonna add them in a particular way. So I'm gonna show you on the board here. We're gonna start off with three and seven. So. There's three and seven. And when we talk about Fibonacci sequence, I've created a word called fibonacci -noid style. So that means in Fibonacci, when we did the, 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 the normal Fibonacci sequence, one, one, two, is that one and two make three, two and three make five, three and five make eight, five and eight, eight make 13. And you, re you remember when we do Fibonacci compression, digital compression, we keep subtracting nine. So if you took nine from 13, you end up with four. But instead of taking away nine, you could just add the digits and say one and three adds up to four. So continued subtraction of nine is the same as just adding the digits. So we're going to do the same here. So we can take any two numbers in the universe, like three and seven is what? Ten. And then you say seven and ten is seventeen. 10 and 17 is 27. So this forms an infinite additive sequence, but we're going to simplify it because the numbers are going to get bigger and bigger as we keep adding the previous term. So I'm going to simplify this again. So here's 3 and 7. They were our seed digits, 3 and 7. So 10 is the sum of 1 and 0 is 1. 17 is the sum of 1 and 7 is 8. And 27 is the sum of 2 plus 7 is 9. And, what, and it goes forever until we find something that repeats. And it just happens that when we take any two numbers in the universe and keep adding them like this and reducing them to single digits, they form 24 repeating pattern. There's always a 24 repeating pattern. But this is only in what we call modulus 9. So this is, um, you know the clock, we have a clock of 12 digits. So if you said the time was 13, zero, zero, we know that there's not 13 hours in the 12 hour clock. So when you go 12 hours, you start from here, you do 12 hours plus one more. So to, to translate 13 o'clock, you take all, you subtract the 12 and you end it with a one. So 13 is really one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. So we're just using 12 digits. So that's called mod 12. 
So when you're at the airport, you're always working with a mod 12. So this three five codes is based on what we call modulus or mod nine. It's not the decimal system that we're working with, it's based on the wheel of nine, because the wheel of nine opens up the Stargate mathematics. So if you um, zoom in on here, if you zoom in on this, this, there's three five codes, we're gonna look at this one. What we're looking for is the numbers that we wrote on the board. If you come to the board, we're looking for something that goes three, seven, one, eight, nine. Can we find three, seven, one, eight, nine in this wheel? In any of these wheels, there's three distinct phi codes. So oh, look, so I start here, there's the three, there's the seven, there's the one, there's the eight, and there's the nine. So even though the numbers are upside down, it just shows that the sum of any two numbers in the universe will always fit into any of these three. So what's important about these three um, dials that I call them is that the first one starts with one and one gives two. So we'll call this F one plus one. This phi code here goes one, three, four, seven. It's the seed is the one and the three. So we call it F for Fibonacci. This is F one plus three. And this one here is F one, four. One and four make five. So they're giving completely different numbers. So if I started off with um, say four and seven, if my seed numbers were four and seven, it would produce this wheel of 24 that adds up to 108. If I started off with say eight and three, you can see that if you started off with an eight here and then a three, it'll keep repeating after every 24 digits. So this is really critical. These are the three seeds, I call them the three dials. So I'll show you another diagram. So that same information I just showed you now are the three phi codes that, they do add up to 108, but there is another number called plus nine. So the, the real sum is 108 plus nine. 108 plus nine is the infinite cycle. And there's a lot of d data compression inside these diagrams. And this is another fanciful way. So here's the one, one, two, that's phi code one. The next one is one, three, four. And there's another wheel inside one, four, five. And when you put them all together, they all line up with three ones here and opposing, if you went right through the circle, there's a triple eight configuration here. So this is what we call harmonic 888. Um, that's the main symmetry when you put the three possible codes in together. So I call this wheels within wheels. These are the three rings or the three dials that generate all the numbers in the universe. But there's one little anomaly is that this is the chart of if you chose any two numbers in the universe, like I want to start with eight and eight, or I want to start with four and nine. So these are all the possible combinations of how infinite sums form wheels of 24. So you can see here that there's nine by nine. So there's 81 different configurations, but nine of these, the ones where they're shaded, they all have the numbers three, six, or nine. So this is the, um, the wisdom of three, six, and nine is that they form their own wheel or code and to show you what i mean by the three six and nine so if you added three and three it adds six and then you added three and six it forms a nine it forms a cycle like this so i'll just get back to the pattern here yeah so when it whenever you start with a three and a three you get six and it forms eight numbers but you could start with six and six is 12 take away nine it makes three so you could start with nine and six, you could start with nine and three, but these are the, that's called the wheel of eight for the three, six, nine code. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna review this information. What, what this tells me in the, in the Indian system, um, there was a very rare book, one of the earliest books in the history of the Vedas, it was written about um, three, 4,000 years ago, 1200 BC, that's 3,200 years ago. There is a reference to these three phi codes that I just talked about here. And it said in this, um, there was a very cryptic quote in the Rig Veda, and it said, 12 spoke boards, one wheel, three navels. Who understands these? I'll repeat that because this is written 3,200 years ago. The Indians were saying that one of the keys to the universe was this nature of 12 spoke boards, one wheel, and it had three navels, which is birth points. And who understands these? 
So whoever understands this, these wheels within wheels of 24 and 12 and three navels would have access to ancient knowledge. And that's why this symbol of the Triskel, you, you know the yin-yang symbol that is divided into two, but when you divide the circle into three, it's called the Triskel. It's a very ancient symbol, and I believe it captures this knowledge on the three phi codes. So that's pretty much the um, understanding of the three phi codes, and that's why, that's why I believe this discovery of these three golden spirals is significant. And why I'm calling it Harmonic 666 is because we always thought that there was just one Fibonacci sequence. We all, the, the most famous one, when we start one, one, two, three, five, eight, that's universal knowledge. No one's ever talked about these other two. And, and when you put all this universal knowledge together that constitutes three golden spirals that are unique dials, wheels within wheels, so I'm calling it here Harmonic 666. Okay, so that, that's pretty much an overview of what I call the three phi codes. And next time I speak to you, I'm going to talk about what we call, there's another sequence of 24 digits that has an, another amazing property. So next time we have a discussion on this, this is part one. So I'm just... Part two, we'll be talking about another 24 code that's very unique as well. So I'll conclude on that and hope you understood this, um, this complexity of numbers, but just understanding that there is symmetry amongst the chaos. And as pattern hunters, we're always looking for things that repeat, repeatability, what we call recursion. Mm -hmm. So number theory is important because it allows us to see um, pathways of um, um, symmetry in this complex world. So... Keep in touch and see you around.